Okay, so it's gonna be a little windy here, so you have to bear with me, but I'm gonna do a two-year review on my Neo inline trailer. This is a seven and a half by 23 by, I think it's seven foot height on the ceiling. It's, it's very tall. It's at least seven foot tall. Uh, this is a pretty premium trailer. I mean, it's, it's got, you know, if you notice, like really doesn't have any of the wall exposed rivets. This has got torsion axles, radial tires, aluminum rims, LED lights on all the exterior, um, interior, as you can see, fully finished LEDs for the interior. And on that back wall, where is it at? There's a switch on the back wall there. If you see a switch there, and then you see a switch there for, that's for loading loading ramp uh, LEDs. It's got the stainless steel intake vents for exhaust or moisture or whatever's in there. What I like, fully finished walls. I like that it's aluminum versus the Luyan sort of stuff. And I like that it's got the four 32 inch LEDs inside. It's got really nice, nice helmet storage capacity. Um, I never use it for that. I just keep a bunch of different oil parts in there. And uh, I've got about, I want to say three or four trips on this now, big trips to UP. So it's got, I probably got 5,000 miles in this trailer or so. Or so. Um, some things I like about it, the big kick panels, great. The pro taper door entry, see that aluminum piece, makes a transition for loading snowmobiles or anything really nice. Tons of head clearance. I'm six foot tall. As you can see here and if you look at the distance here is at least seven feet of interior height let's see what else i wish they came with the d-rings installed from the factory you have to put all of them down not a big deal i i, I know the theory on why they do it it's because they want to give people the ability to put them where they want blah 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 but what i like about the ones like if you get a legend they're recessed into the floor and I just, I just kind of like that. Let's see what other things there's your, that's your backup battery for your emergency electric. Here's another nice little upgrade. See that like a little aluminum L channel. That's for when you're loading from the front. If your ski comes, it won't go off the side of the trailer. It'll actually hit that and direct you in the trailer. I like that. Um, this is a, a panel that goes in front of the door right here. You can see those little holders on either side of the door. So if you're loading from the front, your ski, you won't just drive it right to the door. So that's nice. You can see in here, we've got three, call it long track. I, it, I don't know if you want to call it just the new standard. That's a 146. This is a 137. This is a 144. And my son's little sled. We have plenty of room in here. I mean, it's not an issue. I've, I've done four full-size snowmobiles in here without an issue before. I've had Legends. I've had Amerilites. I've had Holland. I've had r rs and I've now had three Neos. I buy the Neo for a few reasons. Number one, I'm biased. I like Michigan made trailers, not that the others aren't. I think R&R used to maybe make, or Triton used to maybe make a more premium trailer, but they're so expensive now. I don't think the price justifies the price tag and the value of what comes in it. But you know, with the Neo, this class design, really cool. You got the one single in the front versus the barn door in the sides. You got the pro doors in front and rear. The cableless design, I like that. Stab jacks. Um, let's see. LEDs, front and rear. And you can kind of see how this thing's held up. This thing sees pine sap from live, you know, in our, our pine trees. Um, there's the old Neo badge. Loading lights front and rear. All the lights still work, no issues. Um, this model is, let me see, I just want to show two. This is, I think, a 7,000-pound GVW. There you go. This is the NASX 2375-TR6. Not really sure what that means. Um, let's see. Yep, 7,000-pound GVW. It's got this interesting kind of flat in the front. Some people like it. Some people don't. I know why they do it. It kind of gives you a little more space in the front where you can jam a sled in the front. Some areas I'd like to see them improve in the future I'm not a fan of this jack. I already didn't even last a season. I got just ordered another one at Amazon. I'd like to see them change their rivets out, get rid of this uh, aluminum and put stainless because you get this galvanic corrosion. You see all this corrosion going down the door. I don't care for that. The little rubber pieces for the doors for when you load. I don't know why they don't do a whole big strip because those things crack. Puts a lot of stress just in that area. You could distribute the load better if they put a longer piece. Let's see what other things. Here's another thing if I'm being picky, but I feel like it's okay to be picky when you're looking at these are some of the most expensive trailers you can buy. The, the corrosion on how the um, a lot of these bolts holding up. 
just didn't hold up that great. Kind of surprised. Wish they would use a little better grade. But, and it's funny is some of these corrode and some of them don't. Look at that. That's odd. The top ones are fine too. Look at, here's another one that's interesting. Look at this that holds the stab jack in on that side. It looks great. Oh, look at this one. Rusted to be. It's almost like it was like a different material. So interesting. I already ordered a, a Lippert one. It's a little better built. So hopefully it holds up a little better. This is a 2022 Neo. It's a pretty top of the line trailer. A little disappointed that, that the uh, tongue jack didn't last more than a year. And, and to be fair, this thing's only been used on three snowmobile trips. I wash the trailer after every single trip so it doesn't see salt but more than 96 hours at a time because I wash the whole body of undercarriage, the jack, the truck, obviously, everything in the trailer, axles, everything. So a little disappointed with that, but the Neo is still a pretty decent trailer. Like a lot of things anymore, I feel like the quality of anything is just not excellent. You know, here's a few little things that kind of just drive me crazy. You know, got a little bit of corrosion there. Once again, this, this thing literally saw hardly any salt uh for extended period we've already replaced a bunch of these uh they were rusted but those look pretty decent coming into the season uh tires look good check that they got a really cool clasp design so you don't have like the barn door construction i actually really prefer this this their door i think is best in class but this like it's galvanic corrosion because this is stainless and this is aluminum and this will clean up they, they should they should honestly you know make an improvement there in general you know this has been a pretty good trailer put this down and kind of show you how cool their door is so that's it for the door there make sure you close that this bad boy opens no cables how cool is that no cables no flap that goes down this is they think they call this like their pro flap or something like that but you can see that's the little hinge system and it's awesome i mean it's a it's a really good setup the one i'm not gonna call complaint because pros and cons you almost need to run a bit of a transition because there's a huge gap in between and and you'll catch your skis and, and they sort of know that so they put this really nice like transition right here but it's still not enough your carbides would just destroy that so i put those on after the fact one of the other things i like about this trailer too is it's got the, the really high walls the kick panels whatever you want to call it um, I like that. A lot of people are confused of how I do my floors and my layout. You see, I don't have ski guides or anything down. Reason I do this is I like the ability to load my trailer multiple ways. If I want to own one sled, two sled, three sleds, four sleds, you'd have to have the entire floor covered with different ski guides and everything. And I don't have to do that with mine. So what I do is I run to the wheels underneath each ski to get into the trailer. And then I just do my loading ramps I run for uh, traction with uh, studs or no studs. And then once I get in the trailer, I just run an old track or other pieces of horse mat stall stuff. I don't remember where I got it at, one of the snowmobile shops, but as you can see, I kind of did the same thing on that back door, but it's a great trailer. I like how they use the aluminum walls inside, 32 inch LEDs on the ceiling, finished ceiling inside. Look at this, how sweet is that? No cable system, I love it. It's a really nice feature. If I had a few things I'd like to see them upgrade, not a fan of this flooring. It's very, very soft. It just does not hold up like, like I know, and I know this is a controversial topic, but uh, if you look at like a, a Legend trailer, the carbides don't take the piss out of the door like that. I'd like to see a material that's a little more durable, but otherwise the trailers are pretty decent. You know, they got the stab jacks in the side. It's a, it's a nice trailer. Let's see what else. Otherwise, I mean, you know, it's a great trailer. I, I you know, you, these trailers, something like this now is anywhere between 15 and $17,000. Got a few rock chips, you can kind of see. Um, there's a handful here, kind of got blasted pretty good. I don't know if that was from the Raptor or what vehicle that was towing, but it, it pushed them pretty good, which is another reason why I got these big boy mud flaps on the truck for this season. So hopefully it cuts down on some of the abuse the trailer sees. But otherwise it tows pretty good, just my opinion. And, and you know, there's, there's trade-offs on everything. If you look at where the axles sit, they sit pretty far back, which is good because it puts more weight on the tongue. I don't think it's enough because this trailer unloaded, I hate to say it, it does not tow great. You, you literally have to put, I, have, I found I need at least 750 pounds of tongue weight for this trailer to not be squirrely as can be going down the road. It's the weirdest thing. And this is a 2,500 pound trailer dry and if I don't have 30% of the weight on the tongue, it'll tow horribly. And I've had this issue with F-350 trimmers, F-350 non-trimmers, 
high output diesel, standard output diesel, Ram 2500 Cummins, Raptor, regular F-150. It doesn't matter. If I've towed six different trucks with this trailer, it's the same thing. So at some point you got to say, it's not the truck. So I'm not ripping on Neo because honestly, like I said, I think it's a great trailer for the money. Go price this trailer out in a Lightning, and or, sorry, in a, uh, a Legend. And I bet the Legend is probably five to $10,000 more. Now, some could say, oh, totally worth it. Some could say not. I see, I see pros and cons of each. I think some of the fit and finish of the Legend is far superior to the Neo, uh, to this trailer. But then I see other things where I'm like, ah, I just don't know. So, you know, I like some of the little bougie, the little handle on the side of the door. It says Legend. I think that's kind of cool. Some of the little fit and finish, I think is a little more premium. They use a little better extruded aluminum around the edges, uh, in my opinion. In general, I think this is a very high value trailer. I would put this kind of like the Ram. This is a high value truck. It's not the best, but I think it offers a lot of value. So for your money, Neo, Ram, solid combination. But anyhow, I hope this video is helpful for you. This is a 2022 Neo uh, 23 and a half by seven and a half snowmobile trailer. And uh, we've, uh, we've used it for snowmobiles. We've used it for side-by-sides. I use it for my mower. It's, it's a good trailer. I, wouldn't, I would definitely recommend it. You know, if someone's looking for a nice trailer, I think you can't go wrong here. Hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching.